Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. I catch mom snooping in my fiance's room and tell her to stop, but she insists she's helping. Turns out she was hiding a huge secret all along. I had always thought that my mom was the most trustworthy person in the world. She had always been there for me, through thick and thin, but that all changed one day when I caught her snooping in my fiance's room. It was a regular day, and I was on my way to work when I decided to stop by my fiance's house to grab my keys. As I walked in, I heard a noise coming from upstairs. I followed the noise and found my mom in my fiance's room, going through his things. I was shocked and hurt. Mom, what are you doing in here? I exclaimed, my heart pounding in my chest. She turned around, startled by my presence. Oh, honey, you scared me. I was just looking for something, she said, her voice shaking. I was not buying it. I knew that my mother had always been nosy, and I had a feeling that she was up to something. Cut it out, Mom. This is my fiance's room, and you have no right to be in here, I said, trying to keep my voice calm. But my mother was not one to back down easily. I know, I know, but I promise this is important, she said, her eyes pleading with me. I could not help but feel curious. What could be so important that my mother would risk getting caught snooping through my fiance's room? Fine, but you better have a good explanation, I said, crossing my arms over my chest. My mother walked over to the closet and started moving some of the clothes hanging inside. Look, I found this, she said, pointing to a small door that I had never noticed before. She turned around and gave me a guilty look. I'm sorry, dear. I know this might seem strange, but I had to see for myself, she said. I was confused. See what for yourself. What's going on? She hesitated for a moment before answering. I found a secret compartment in his room, and I had to see what was inside, she said. I could not believe what I was hearing. How did you even know about this? I asked. I just had a feeling, she said. I'm sorry. I know this is probably crossing a boundary, and I should have respected your privacy and your fiancés, but I was curious. I was angry and hurt. You had no right to go through his things like that, I told her. You need to respect our privacy and leave his room alone. I know, I know, she said, looking down. I'm sorry. I'll leave you both alone from now on. But she did not leave. Instead, she pulled out a tiny key from her pocket, opened the secret compartment, and showed me what she found inside. Inside, she found a stack of love letters, all written to Sarah, dating back to when we started dating. I felt so good, and for me, it showed how much he loved me. I was especially excited that my mom did not find anything to use against him. They were all written in the same handwriting, and they all had the same tone and sentiment. Oh boy, how did she even know about this, I thought to myself, a little embarrassed as I read through the heartfelt messages. Tears welled up in my eyes as I realized just how much Michael truly loved me. But as I continued to read through the letters, my mom asked if I noticed the pattern. She said that it was his way of manipulating me, and that is what he had been doing for years using these love letters to control my emotions and keep me dependent on him. I did not believe her until she brought out a sealed envelope, and when we opened it, we found a bunch of documents, photos, and videos. I was shocked to see the truth about my fiancé and his past. I found out that he had been lying to me about almost everything, from his job to his family. He was not who I thought he was. I was stunned. I did not know what to say or do. I could not believe that the person I loved and was going to marry had been lying to me for so long. My mom's snooping might have saved me from making a huge mistake and marrying a fraud. I thanked my mom for showing me the truth, even though it was done in the wrong way. I broke up with my fiancé and never looked back. But as the days went by, my mom's actions continued to weigh on my mind. I could not shake the feeling that her snooping was not just an innocent mistake but rather a calculated move on her part. I started to notice other strange behavior from her like her constantly asking me questions about my fiancé, and even going as far as to ask my friends and family about him. I began to suspect that my mom had an ulterior motive for snooping in my fiancé's room. I knew she had always been overprotective of me and had never fully approved of him, but I never thought she would stoop to such a level. I confronted her about my suspicions, and she finally confessed. She told me that she had always had her doubts about my fiancé and that she had hired a private investigator to look into his past. She had been keeping tabs on him for months, waiting for the right moment to reveal the truth to me. I was furious. Not only had she invaded my privacy, but she had also spent a considerable amount of money without my knowledge or consent. I did not trust my mom anymore. She knew how devastated I was when I found out about my fiancé. She could have just come clean then. My decision to cut both my mother and my fiancé off started to have consequences. People who knew us as a couple started to see me as the villain. They could not understand why I would end things with such a perfect man and they could not fathom the idea that my mother had played a part in my decision. My friends and family were confused, and some were even angry with me. 
I tried to explain my side of the story. Everyone seemed to turn against me. They still could not understand why I would break off a relationship without any apparent reason. They thought I was being paranoid and delusional, but I could not bring myself to tell them the truth. The thought of reliving that moment of betrayal was too much to bear. The truth was a bitter pill to swallow, and it took me a long time to come to terms with what had happened. But eventually, I realized that my mom's actions had ultimately led to the truth being exposed and that was something that I could not ignore. I reached out to my mom, and we had a long talk about what had happened. She apologized for her actions and for the pain she had caused me. I forgave her, but our relationship was never the same again. It has been two years since I caught my mother snooping in my fiance's room, and everything fell apart. I had cut off both my mother and my fiance's, but decided to forgive my mom, as I mentioned before. But as it turns out, the betrayal was deeper than I ever could have imagined. I still had a feeling that something was off about the whole situation. My mother's actions seemed too calculated, too planned, but I intentionally ignored it. I had moved on with my life, trying to put the past behind me, but I could not still shake the feeling that something was not quite right. I had always suspected that my mom had an ulterior motive for snooping in my fiance's room other than finding out his past, but I could never quite put my finger on it. One day, I received a letter in the mail from an unknown sender. Inside, I found a series of documents and photos that revealed the truth about my mom's actions. She had been behind the manipulation of my ex-fiance all along. She had orchestrated the entire situation from hiring the private investigator to planting the evidence in his room. I was shocked and horrified. I could not believe that my own mother would go to such lengths to control my life. I had always known she was overprotective, but I never thought she would go to such extreme measures. I confronted her about the letter, but she denied any involvement. She insisted that she had only acted out of love and concern for me, but I could not accept that. I felt like my entire life had been a lie, controlled by my mother's manipulation. I made the difficult decision to cut ties with my mother, this time for good. It was painful but I knew it was necessary for my own mental and emotional well-being. Again, my family and friends did not understand, and they thought I acted irrationally because they thought I could cut off anyone I liked over small incidents. I was constantly met with judgment and criticism. I struggled to come to terms with what had happened and the role I had played in it all. I felt guilty for not seeing the truth sooner and for not standing up to my mother sooner. But I also knew that I had to take responsibility for my own actions and make a mesh of the mistakes I had made. I sought therapy to help, and I could not stop thinking about what could have been. I wish I had listened to my fiance outs when he told me to believe him, but somewhere in my mind, I had wanted it to be true because I was scared of what such a commitment as marriage would do to us. Some couples thrived in marriage, and some did not. This is all my fault. If you knew that your mom was a crazy person, then you should not have taken her word for it. You also confessed that you were looking for something to get out of the marriage because you were scared. This is why you easily believed your mom. You lost what you could have had, but then again, it could have still ended badly. I do not think you did anything wrong here. All the evidence seemed too convincing, and your mom put thoughts in your head. You need to keep as far away from her as possible. Everyone gets cold feet when they are about to get married, and all you needed was a little reassurance from your fiancé. The same thing happened to me before I got married, but it was the best decision I ever made. My husband and I have been married for a year now, but we dated for three years. My husband has two kids from a previous marriage, but they live full-time with him. One is five and the other is seven. One Sunday, it was just me and the kids, and when I asked them what they wanted to eat, I suggested things that they usually eat, like oatmeal and fruit or protein pancakes, etc. I am a first-generation Mexican-American, despite me looking very white myself. So I do not know how to say weenie con huevo, so I said I would make them some, and asked if they wanted to try it. They said yes, so I cut up the hot dogs, poured eggs on the pan, scrambled them, added a little bit of cheese, and put it on a piece of bread, lettuce, and tomato, and added a little bit of ketchup on the side of their plate. They loved it and said it was delicious. My husband and I had gone out, so they stayed with their grandparents. We got back on Sunday afternoon. My mother-in-law pulled us aside and said that the kids were asking her to make this sandwich that I made them and asked us why I would give kids hot dogs for breakfast with eggs and how unhealthy. I was taken aback but I also had to remember that she is an older, middle-class white woman living in the suburbs of an affluent white neighborhood. So I explained to her that growing up, eating that was something my mom did like many Hispanic people did. My husband stepped in and said, hey, calm down, I have had it. It is really good and I do not mind if the kids have it, so please. I thought that was the end of that, but now Thanksgiving is coming and we had agreed that it would be at our house. And now she called me earlier this week saying that she thought it would be best if she did the cooking this year at our house because she kept asking what I was planning to make and how I made things because she did not want anything weird on an American holiday. I told her, yeah, I know. 
I was born here. I have celebrated Thanksgiving all my life. What is something weird I could possibly make? And then she said it. Well, I was just wondering if you were going to make a Mexican twist on things I said. That is very racist. And she gasped saying, how could I say that? It is not racist because I am Mexican and I was the one giving the kids weird things. You should not send them to school with ethnic food so they do not get bullied. I hung up and I was scared to tell my husband, but I told him when he came home from work and he was angry. He told his mom that she could stay home and eat dry, bland turkey if she wanted because we were having Thanksgiving. And if she wanted to come, she needed to apologize and mean it. I know what she said is wrong, but I feel bad because she said I ruined Thanksgiving by being sensitive and dramatic and that now the family will be split up because of me. Daye to your husband supporting you. I get wanting a traditional Thanksgiving meal on a holiday, but holy hell, your mother-in-law is being racist. She called Mexican food weird, which I find ironic because the breakfast you described involves hot dogs, which screams America to me, and also sounds delicious. She also indicated your stepkids will be bullied for bringing ethnic food to class. I doubt this will be the case, but the implication was manipulative and rude. Danta, that was so racist. Good for you for calling her on it. You did not ruin Thanksgiving. She did. I am a 22-year-old female. My grandparents died when I was young, and my mom inherited the house. She never sold it and likes to use it for holiday celebrations. My brother, 24-year-old Sam, and I have full access to the house. Sam uses it often and does not treat it well. This upsets my mom because she wants it to be clean for the holidays. Yet she does not take away his keys and always expects me to help her clean the mess because she knows Sam will not. So I came to town with my new kitten yesterday and was planning to stay at my grandparents' house. I was told that there may be some fishing gear out, but overall, it was clean. I walked into the house, and it was so bad that the only safe place for me to leave the cat unattended was the bathroom. It was disgusting. There was rotting meat, maggots, mold, mud, open beer cans everywhere fishing hooks on the carpet, plus a pile of like 20 fishing rods thrown on the floor. There was more, but it is hard to describe how bad it was with just words alone. I called my mom crying because I had nowhere else to stay since they had guests staying in my bedroom. My options were to figure something out there or drive hours back to my apartment. My mom told me to just clean it up enough so that it would be safe for my cat to be there and to just throw any of Sam's stuff into the garage. She said that we were going to have to clean it up anyway, so might as well just start now. So I did, even though I was upset with the fact that I was once again expected to clean up Sam's mess for him. While cleaning, I put his pile of fishing rods into the garage like my mom said. Earlier today, he came over to get something for his next fishing trip, and I guess two of his rods that I moved broke. I do not know how, because he would not show me, but he started demanding that I pay him $150 for replacements because I was the one that moved them. I refused and told him he has no business treating the house the way he does. I essentially said that I am sorry his rods broke and I did not mean to damage anything, but if he had not left them out like he did, this would not be an issue. I showed him pictures of the rat droppings, mold, and maggots that I had to clean up just so my cat would not eat them and get sick. He had lied and said that the house was pretty much clean, and since he did not clean it up himself, then this is what he gets. Now he refuses to speak to me until I pay him and calls me in a hole for refusing to. My mom is trying to stay out of it but suggested I just pay him so we can have a peaceful Thanksgiving. My dad is on my side. My brother's girlfriend texted me, basically saying that I am in a hole because it is easier for me to afford $150 than it is for him. In response, I sent her photos of everything I had to clean up and she left me on red. At first I was sure of my stance but now I am not sure and was hoping to get some outside input. Ida? Thanks for all of the responses. It turns out what really happened was that Sam's girlfriend ended up not seeing the rods where I put them and stepped on them. She did not tell Sam this until later today after she texted me and I did not respond how she had hoped. Currently, Sam and his girlfriend are here but downstairs fighting about who knows what. He is apparently going to be helping to clean out the garage, so we will see how that goes. As I mentioned, I cleaned up the house yesterday enough so that my cat would not get into anything that would make her sick or injure her. But there is still a lot of work to do before the house is fit to have company over. My mom came in earlier, saw the state of the house, and started crying. I did not mention this in the post, but my mom inherited the house jointly with my aunt, who lives on the other side of the state. My aunt would flip out if she saw what Sam did to it which adds an extra layer of pressure on my mom to get it cleaned. The only thing my mom said when she walked in was that she is stressed about all the stuff she has to do to prepare for Thanksgiving, and then she just stopped speaking altogether. I tried to talk to her, but she just ignored me. Now she is just in the kitchen trying to make it look presentable. Not much else to say. Everyone is currently too stressed out with other stuff to speak to me at the moment, so I am just in the corner on my laptop with my cat pretending to do homework.
I'm not sure what is going to happen next, but I will keep you all updated if anything else of interest happens. Well, I told my aunt about everything, and now she is pushing to sell the house. She says that she does not want to pay expenses on a house that a 20-something-year-old is just going to trash. So yeah, that is that, I guess. As for my brother, well, there is a lot more to his story than I initially realized. That is out of the realm of this sub. Dana, you would know if you broke a fishing rod. Sounds like a scam to me. And if he does not want his stuff messed with, he should put it away himself. It is not his house. He has already proven he lies because he claims he left the house clean. Dana, I suggest you print the pictures out and write your cleaning fee on the back for anyone who has questions. He is disgusting on so many levels. Do not pay him. Do not apologize anymore. It is his fault. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.